I'm the graveyard keeper. On my way home from work one night, I was run over by a car. And now, I'm here. Am I dead? It's hard to say for sure. But to have any hope of returning home, I must first befriend a sentient skull, vandalize corpses, and raise my very own army of the undead. I played 100 Days of Graveyard Keeper. After getting smushed, we awaken on day one in a strange house. Heading outside, I find Jerry, who will become our guide and more importantly, our friend throughout this journey. We had a quick chat and then I headed south, where I encountered this communist corpse cart that had a fresh delivery for me. Jerry insists that we take the body into the morgue to quote, have some fun. Once inside, I learn how to make succulent meals out of human flesh before respectfully moving my first guest to his final resting place. <laughs> I can just kick him. I wonder if I can kick him in the hole. Oh. Digging holes and tearing up bodies turns out to be hard work and hard work drains my energy, which you can see here. Once the hole was filled in, we met the bishop, who gives me the title of graveyard keeper and is now technically our manager. The boss man assigns me my first quest, which is to repair the graveyard to at least quality level five. As you can see, I have my work cut out for me. The bishop says that he will return every purple Sunday to check on my progress. Before he leaves, the bishop gives us a burial certificate, which we gain by disposing of corpses properly. Not like that, and can sell for a small profit. I take my spoils to the village, where we meet Horodric. For some reason, he buys burial certificates, and he's also open to buying the tasty meat that I acquire from corpses, provided that I can find a certification stamp, real or otherwise. He sends me on my way with a letter for Kresvold, the local blacksmith. After meeting Kresvold, he has me take care of some classic tutorial enemies, in exchange for some basic tools and a whetstone that I can use to repair them. On my way home, I pick some mushrooms, and then Jerry demands that I get him a beer. I finally go to bed and wake up on day two with a ghost in my room who asks me to please remove the southeasternmost body in the graveyard. A simple request. Uh, I don't know who I meant to get rid of. All I saw was dig up, and then if you could do that for me. Eeny, meeny, money, mo. I wonder if I can take out his flesh and stuff after digging him up. I'm a genius. Just kicking this poor man down the road. See you later, mate. After committing what I assume is a crime, Jerry informs me that the river that I just soiled leads into a nearby town, which might be important later. I decided to spend the rest of day two fixing up the graveyard as best that I could. I used stone repair kits to tidy up the grave fences, and I also fixed a few wooden crosses. Alright, that'll do. Off to the pub. Uh, what? Maybe. Inside, I meet this nerd who tells me that I have no riz and then has the audacity to send me on a fetch quest to get him some ink and paper. I then remember to buy the beer for Jerry before heading home for the night. Ghostman is back on day three, this time to explain grave quality. Basically, this boils down to red skulls bad, white skulls good. Red skulls can be removed by performing certain surgeries. These surgeries can also lead to surgical mistakes, which will lower the quality of the corpse. I then decided to check out the basement where we meet Snake. Although we can't reach him yet, he announces to himself that he will return every night, which is helpful information. Knowing this, I quickly get to work on acquiring materials to clear the way. Chopping down trees and smashing rocks awards me with these little red and green orb things, which I'm going to call science. These science points can be spent on unlocking new technologies from the tech tree. Physical labor gives me red points. Anything to do with nature gives me green points. And blue points are given to me for doing spiritual things, like making gravestones or studying different objects. Once I had enough basic materials, I headed back to the village to ask Kresvold how the hell I was supposed to process metal ore. On my way home, I had an epiphany. Oh. You know what I haven't done? I haven't given Jerry his beer. I don't know where Jerry lives though. Maybe... Ah. Actually, we're busy people. We don't have any time to sleep. With no time to lose, I drank my stamina potions and worked well into the early hours of day four, with the goal of constructing a furnace and a chopping spot to process firewood. Aha! We have iron. I then spent the afternoon collecting all of the iron ore north of my house, before finally going to sleep. I woke up early again on day 5 and spent some more time gathering resources while I waited for my iron to smelt. I also learnt the stoneworking technology, which would allow me to create a stone cutter. After a quick nap, Jerry informs me that some guy called the Inquisitor is up on the hill. Oh come on, he just looks like a villain. He invites me to watch a witch burning ceremony. This went down exactly as you would imagine, and afterwards he asked to be my friend. No, I'm not being your friend. You just set that guy on fire. Absolutely not. 
We are not friends. With only two days left until the bishop returned, I decided to focus my efforts on repairing the graveyard. The afternoon was devoted to building a carpenter's workbench and a stone cutter so that I could create repair kits. On the morning of day six, I got to work repairing all of the wooden grave structures. Doing this gave me enough science to buy technology that allowed me to start creating my own gravestones. Working well into the night, I had managed to make the graveyard less terrible. By the time I was finished, it was the morning of day seven. Once all of the broken gravestones and fences were replaced, I had fixed the graveyard just in time. The bishop was happy with my work and unlocked the church. I now had the ability to hold church services before my own congregation every Sunday. Before I could explore the church further, the corpse cart arrived, and the donkey took a massive poo in my driveway. Mr. A! Oh, I stepped in it. Eww. Oh, now I'm slippery. Woo! <laughs> Woo! Woo! Oh, oh god. <laughs> like a speed boost. Once I was done sliding around in shit, I went to bed. I was awoken in the middle of the night, however, by a refugee who had invited me to his camp. I checked the place out, but I had no materials to help them, so I left them be. Alright, well, it was lovely meeting you all. Enjoy being a refugee. On my way back, I found a few cool things that I hadn't yet seen. Ooh, spooky tree. What's an apiary? I don't know. I wish I paid more attention in school. Would have been an engineer. Now I'm sitting here playing graveyard keeper. And then I attended to the body in the morgue. Oh, fuck, the dead guy. Oh, he's probably rotten by now. <laughs> I left him in there for like 24 hours. He'll be stinking up the place. Oh, he's a good one too. What I might do, go get some more green science before I cut him open. Because I broke one of these um bush things earlier and it gave me like 10. All right, back to the matter at hand. We are dismembering this poor man. I hope you enjoy your stay. I then spent the rest of the day chopping down trees. On the morning of day nine, I was picking up poo. The poo is still there. It's like the immortal poo. There we go. Hey, carrot seeds. Before getting to work, building iron parts to open up the path in my basement. The corpse cart arrived in the early evening and the donkey presented me with an ultimatum. No more corpses. That was unless I fixed his squeaky wheels and gave him five carrots per delivery from now on. I better just take you out the back and shoot you, wanker. Before setting out to become a carrot farmer, I fixed the collapsed basement and talked to Snake. But he refused to talk to me unless I gave him five faith, which is a resource that I can earn by attending church. On the bright side, I did find a neat shortcut into the town. While I was there, I asked Horodrick about the farm, which he said belongs to a traveling merchant. But this guy only comes to town on every this day. In the meantime, I was given permission to use the farm. And so, day 10 was spent getting my hands dirty by doing honest work in the fields. I took an afternoon nap, and when I awoke, I had another uninvited guest. Who are you? Who are these random people that keep showing up in my house unannounced? It's really not cool. It turned out to be Kresvold, who dragged me down to a town meeting concerning alleged vampire attacks. Inevitably, it becomes my duty to track it down, and so on the morning of day 11, I set out to find the vampire. Our first lead was the farmer's son, but he wasn't very helpful. Next, we try Horodric's wife, also unhelpful. Lastly, I had to talk with the astrologer, but he is only in town on every moon day. So I spent the rest of the night harvesting goodies from the lighthouse while I waited for him to arrive. However, when he did, he seemed uninterested in talking to me, and waiting for him ended up costing me the entirety of day 12. I arrived home that evening to find my carrots fully ready for harvest. I gave them to the donkey before heading down into the church cellar to tidy the place up. This took up the rest of the night, and then in the morning, I gave my first real church sermon. Successful sermons provide me with faith, which I can use to research and do some cool things that you'll get to see soon. After church was over, I spent most of the day gaining science by researching notes that I had found in the cellar. On the night of day 13, I talked to Snake again. After giving him some faith, I was instructed to find the Keeper's Key, which would allow us to progress further into the cellar. For now though, I went back home, fixed my tools, smelted some iron, and went to bed. I spent the remainder of day 14 wandering around in a fruitless attempt to find oil for the donkey's squeaky wheel. On day 15, it was my goal to build the church cellar workbench, which meant cutting down trees and smithing iron into nails and complex parts. I finished my preparations in the early hours of day 17, and I finally built the workbench. 
only to realize that I did not yet have the ability nor the resources to utilize it properly. Feeling sad, I then headed down into town on my last attempt to find oil, which I ended up being able to buy from this crazy dude who lives in a barrel. Oh my god, he just trades with me. Oh, I'm such a retard. After traveling home, the donkey finally got off strike and handed me another corpse. I peeled its skin off and extracted his skull and blood for science. Okay, I did see to make paper, we need to remove their skin. Okay, that made him worse, like considerably worse. Let's try to take this out. Once again, that made him worse. And then I disposed of the evidence in the river. Bye bye. The next order of business was to fix up the morgue, where I rebuilt the workbench and repaired the corpse hatch. Jerry was also kind enough to inform me that he will share secrets with me in exchange for me fueling his alcohol addiction with wine. Once that was taken care of, our dear friend the donkey asked us for five apples and a cookbook, with the threat of returning to burn down my house if I failed to comply. I agreed and he returned soon after with a fresh corpse and a visitor. This guy said he was looking for a key, which is located in a skull and can be used to open a secret area next to the morgue. Luckily for us, we know a skull. The plan was to clean Jerry and secretly remove the key from inside his head without him noticing. However, to do this, we were going to need another beer and something called river sand, which until this point I had never seen before. Continuing the task at hand, we butcher the corpse on the autopsy table and then bury him before anyone can see my numerous surgical mistakes. I purchased some basic farming technologies on the morning of day 18. These will allow me to grow different types of crops and eventually my own fruit trees. I then headed into the town to run a few errands. I'm going to go and talk to the guy again, the astrologer. I don't know, maybe I was doing something wrong the first time, but we'll see. Also, wine for Jerry. I don't know where to get wine from, if maybe I have to make it, but that's also on the agenda. My first stop was the pub. No, he does not have wine. Ooh, but I meant to get a beer for cleaning Jerry. I don't remember which one, two different kinds of beer. After that, we went to the lighthouse to see if the astrologer would actually talk to me this time. Ah, oh, so this time it works. Sure, literally did nothing different. Success. However, before he would help me, he asked that I give him a skull. Unfortunately, I didn't have one on me, so I would have to return next week. There was a corpse waiting for me when I arrived back home, and out of curiosity, I decided to completely butcher the poor guy. Okay, we're going to go full Dr. Frankenstein and just remove everything, just to see what happens. Finally, I placed some more iron in the furnace before getting to bed. My next crop of carrots was successfully grown on the morning of day 11, and after picking them and replanting some devil's lettuce, it was time for church. Once the worshippers had left, I headed underground to conduct research on human organs. By doing this, I gained a whole heap of blue science, which I used on learning on how to make benches for my church and learning how to write. My theory was that the more benches I could fit in my church meant more attendees, and more attendees would mean more donations. Naturally, this meant that my evening was taken up by cutting down trees and then getting distracted fighting bats. I felt wildly productive on the morning of day 20. As such, I was very busy processing wood into filch and iron into nails for my church benches. I took a break in the evening to ruin yet another corpse, and then it was back to making strong wooden planks. By day 22, the process was complete, and now I have a total of four pews in my church. After that, I paid a visit to the farmer so that I could buy more carrot seeds for the donkey. I tilled some more soil in the afternoon before finally sowing my next carrot crop. After that, another body was dropped off and I did my thing. Okay, let's try and make a body that's actually good. Let's not just ruin everything. You know what that'll do. Instead of going to sleep that night, I decided to spend the night building a desk. The desk would allow me to turn paper and stories into notes. I can then use these to generate more science points at the study table. I finally went to bed on the morning of day 23, only to be woken up by another body. After putting the poor fella to rest, I spent the rest of the night collecting basic materials as most of mine have been exhausted by this point. This continued for the majority of day 23, until I visited the town to sell off some of the things that I had collected. While I was here, I met Tress, who sold wood. I also met a lumberjack, who must have gotten me confused with Santa Claus, because he asked me for a new axe. I processed a little bit more wood when I got home, and then it was off to bed. On day 24, the astrologer had returned, and this meant I could finally progress his questline. I grabbed a skull, and then hurried to go see him. If I miss him again, because I was too busy making fucking wood, I'm going to be so angry. Come on, I can make it. The astrologer then told me about a portal on Witch Hill, 
that could be used in future to potentially take me home. More importantly, he gave me the keeper's key, which would allow me and Snake to finally progress through the gate in the cellar. I chopped this tree down and then sold 32 wood billets to the lumberjack before heading home. By doing this, I would now be able to access his level two shop from the following day. This was important because I could now acquire wooden beams. These would be useful soon in clearing out the rest of the blockages in the cellar, as well as getting some other essential upgrades. I collected a few more logs in the evening and then crafted them into another stack of billets to sell. I passed the morning of day 25 restocking my log pile and then mucking around with my farm. I learnt here that peat can be used as a basic fertilizer, which will make my crops grow a little bit faster. I then made sure to pay the donkey's wages before conducting my sermon. Come on, three times in a row. Please. Yeah, baby. Luck was on my side and I pulled off a successful miracle for the third week in a row. After that, I studied some more body parts for blue science, and then I got a quest from the bishop to make clay bowls. Accepting this task gave me the technology to gather river sand, which we needed to clean Jerry. And so, I dug up a whole heap of sand and then proceeded to forget to give Jerry a good scrub. Instead, I ventured into town where I door camped Tress, and then I once again sold my stack of billets before purchasing a few beams off of him for home improvement. I then got to work crafting wedges and iron parts so that I could finally fix the basement. I managed to clear three out of four blockages, which now meant that I could move freely underground between my house and the church cellar. On the way home, I walked past the graveyard and noticed the fact that it looked like shit. So my evening was taken up by making new gravestones for all of my guests. This work continued into the next morning, but resulted in my graveyard quality jumping from six to 13. In the afternoon, there was another body waiting for me in the morgue but I couldn't be bothered dealing with it properly, so I sent him down the river. I checked on my crops and it seemed to me that my homemade fertilizer had worked wonders, as all of my crops were now fully grown. I spent most of the afternoon dicking around in the farm until receiving a body in the early evening. It was around this time where I finally remembered that I still hadn't cleaned Jerry. After scrubbing him up real good, we find out that the key opens a whole new secret area. I woke up on day 28 with a serious case of morning wood. By that, obviously I mean that I had to spend the entire morning collecting wood. After I was finished grabbing onto my wood with both hands, I realized that Snake had returned. I gave him the keeper's key and we progressed further into the basement together. All was well until I was undone by an act of God. Luckily for us, death has no consequences here. And I was back into the cellar before I knew it. Snake then told us about the dungeons behind him, where I could find useful items. He then gave me a shopping list asking for me to find him a bucket of blood and some bloody nails. I opted to explore the rest of the newly uncovered area where I met this bloke. After inflicting some consensual pain, he hinted at the possibility of me being able to revive corpses and having them work for me. I poked around in the room where I found a blueprint for a resurrection table and a few bottles of zombie juice. After that, I decided to check out the dungeon. The enemies in level one weren't very interesting or challenging and sadly, I ran out of stamina before I could finish the level. After restoring my stamina through sleep, I followed the kinky zombie's tip and headed north to find his mate. I ended up traveling too far though, where I found a few mining sites and a workbench. Eventually, I found the guy I was looking for. I wanted to put him to work collecting resources, but throwing him at the tree proved to be ineffective. I took him back to the dungeon and asked the OG zombie, but he too was pretty unhelpful. I ended up carrying the zombie around for most of the day, unsure of what to do with him. I eventually worked out that I needed to construct a resurrection table, which would have been easy enough. However, I somehow got the basic ingredients for a resurrection table confused with those required for the study table. But I won't realize that for a little while yet. I once again went into the village on day 30, with the objective of getting more seeds and also a pen and ink. Get a astrologist. Who silver for that? That's a fucking outrage. What the fuck? So angry I could just kick this tree. Never mind, you can't kick the tree. Oh, actually, we need to get back to the farmer. We'll have time to be outraged later. Fucking day 99, I'm still gonna be hung up on this. I made it to the farmer with only seconds to spare. 
and I had managed to get everything I needed. Day 31 was church day. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, subscribe to Milky's. Amen. My next objective was to research glass blowing, but to do so, I required the technology for Furnace 2. So I spent the next day digging up stumps and clearing out bushes to gain green science points. The furnace finally went up on day 33. I then spent the day smelting glass to turn into conical flasks. Then let's make some glass. I wish I had put more than one in. I passed the time by having a sleep, chopping up firewood and digging up rocks. I also finally decided to construct the crematorium on day 34, the result of which was wildly disappointing. Well, that's not much of a crematorium. That's more just like a stack of wood. After a whole lot of waiting, day 35 was the day. I eagerly took my materials down to the church cellar, only to figure out that something was wrong. Do I make it in here? No, I must make it somewhere else. Probably in the zombie room, actually. That makes thematic sense. Nope. Remember how I said earlier that I had gotten the ingredients mixed up between the study table and resurrection table? Well, this was my moment of realization. Hang on a sec. Well, where does the resurrection table go? Is there a resurrection table? I just assumed that there was. Aha, I knew there was. Did I not need the glass for the resurrection table? Are you seriously telling me I went on that massive side quest for something I didn't even need? 52 minutes, 52 of my real life minutes were spent making this fucking furnace to make the glass, to make the table, which was the wrong table because actually it's the, um, it's like a study table or something. And I'll tell you exactly what table it is. There you go. 52 of my real life minutes were spent making a study table, which I already have. What is wrong with me? 52 minutes. I could have had a zombie slave man 52 minutes ago. But oh no, no, old Milky's doesn't read what he's doing and he went and made just random shit for an hour, like nearly an hour. God, I hate this. I hate myself. Once I had finished chucking a tantrum, I gathered the parts required for the resurrection table and finally, on the early hours of day 36, I had done it. All right, we got there in the end. How do I use this? Make zombie workers from bodies here. Strap him in. How do I put him on? Only to discover that I didn't actually need the resurrection table yet either. Hang on a second. Hang on a second. Hold the phone. Oh my god. He just works. Oh, okay. Okay, I get it now. I then took my new employee north as he yearned for the mines. I fixed up the workstation and then ran back home to get the things that I needed for the zombie mine. I did the church thing before heading back on day 37. After a lengthy stroll north, I constructed the mine and put Dave to work. My new focus was on automating resource gathering and transportation with zombies. Once I arrived back home, I gathered my harvest and offered tribute to the donkey god in hopes of receiving more dead. Day 38 was spent building and constructing grave fences, as I had been getting a little bit lazy at the graveyard. The donkey god answered, and the corpse cart dropped off another body about halfway through the day, which I intended to turn into a zombie. However, in addition to the zombie juice, the recipe also calls for 10 faith. If I wanted to raise the dead in a timely manner, I would need to improve the church, as at the moment, I was only generating about 3 faith per week. On the morning of day 39, I unlocked some blueprints for the church and began Operation Faith. During the day, I chopped down a whole heap of trees and processed the wood into planks. Work continued into day 40, where I smithed iron parts and made a quick trip into town to buy wooden beams to improve the church shrine. With everything I had made, I was able to build two additional pews, a church shrine, and a confessional booth, raising my church quality to 19. I goofed around with the desk and study table for the rest of day 41, not really achieving anything significant. I continued this trend by making a couple flower beds on day 42 for no real reason at all. Oh, that's tiny. Hell yeah, that looks good. 
I soon remembered that I still hadn't made the pottery for the bishop, who was returning tomorrow. And so I built the pottery wheel and then walked up and down the river all afternoon looking for a source of clay. Oh, that's where you get it from. I wonder how long I've had that unlocked for and just haven't noticed. Working through the night, I had successfully made all of the bowls in time for the bishop's arrival. After trading with the bishop in the morning, I received another quest. This time to get him some fish. Are they going to sit or are they all just going to stand? Oh, yes. After making bank at church that day, I took care of some chores. Ah, oh, he's rotten. Actually, I know just the thing to do with the rotten body. And now we know not to leave them there. I don't even have an urn for him. I'm going to go see if I can make an urn for this poor guy. Considering I just lit him on fire. Cooking table. What is a cooking table? Do I have a cooking table? After searching through the menus for at least five minutes and walking around confused, I realized that I already had a cooking table. There we go. We've got Dave in his funeral urn. Unfortunately for Dave, I had yet to unlock the columbarium, so for now he was going to have to remain in my kitchen cupboard. Poor Dave. I decided to check on other Dave in the afternoon. I better rock up there and he better have just like a million pieces of iron for me. Anything less than I'm throwing him in the river. What does that mean? What do I do? Oh, I think I need a chest. That might be the issue. I returned soon after to build the chest. Fuck off. Are you serious? I forgot one iron part. Literally one. I thought it said four, but it said five. Aha, look, we bought all the ingredients. Only took several attempts. Problem solved. I'll come back and check him in another week. I collected more stone on my way home to construct gravestones before I decided that I should go fishing in the near future. On the morning of day 46, I tended to my residence. Damn, look at this graveyard. Coming along quite nicely. I then decided that today would be the day for fishing. All right, what we might do is go for a quick trip into town and see if we can get a fishing rod. Just get away from it all, you know? I purchased a rod from the bloke at the lighthouse, and then I returned home for some rest before my great fishing adventure on day 47. All right, pack your bags, kids. We're getting away from it. Going for a weekend out fishing. I forgot my fishing rod. Unpack your bags, kids. We're staying at home. God damn it. Ah, oh, it's equipped as a tool, isn't it? You know, I'm, I'm a tool. I should be equipped in that fucking bar. Right, pack your bags, kids. <laughs> We're going fishing again. God damn it. So until I can rebuild the bridge um, later on, I have to go all the way up here, ask to my zombie, turn around and go south, and then I can get to the waterfall where I meant to catch the fish for the um, priest. Which if you ask me is a bit ridiculous. If I get there and I find out that I need bait for the fishing rod, I'm going to lose my shit. You're not getting a new video. Milky's plays 100 days of nothing. Don't do this. No. No, no way. Come on, let me through. Words cannot express how frustrated I am right now. Right, 10 wedges, 2 planks, 4 parts. We can do that. We may as well check on the zombie while we're here, I guess. Kind of makes up for all the time I just wasted. This is a, this is going to sound stupid, but I wonder if you can use coal as a fuel source. Oh, you can. I mean, it should have been obvious, but... Okay, how do I get the little iron from the big iron? At this point, I once again got distracted and decided to expand my yard. I've been putting it off and putting it off, but I need a bigger yard. I then got distracted from my distraction. I've just had a, a thought. Did I forget about a corpse in the, the corpse hole? Yep, fuck. You know what? I knew I'd forgotten something. All right, remember, if we fuck it up, we set him on fire and pretend it didn't happen. Okay, we're going to see what happens when we take it out of his heart. For science, of course. Okay. Taking the heart out ruins everything. Well, we know just what to do with you. Oops. I'm gonna pretend that didn't happen. By the night of day 48, I was now at least three distractions deep and just rambling nonsense to myself. 
Okay, so we need more flitches because I have no bitches. Hey, look at that! That was way more than I thought. Like, I didn't know what I thought was going to happen, but it definitely wasn't that. Oh, hell yeah. Okay, so how do I turn the big iron into, like, iron ore? It doesn't tell me. Let me make sure that I'm not dumb. Okay, no, I can't put it in there because it's big iron. So how do I make big iron small? Do you think I can just Google how to make big iron small and it will know what I mean? We started off day 49 by spreading the word of God. God must have smiled upon me that day because he gave me a moment of clarity and made me sane once again. <laughs> you know what? I only just remembered what I was doing before I got distracted with the corpse and the sermon. We were going fishing. I finally smithed my simple parts and then set off for what I had hoped was the last time. After clearing the path, I had made my way into an incredibly inconvenient swamp. Oh, you know what? Now I bet I can get the grass for that guy. He wanted like the, the hiccup grass or whatever it's called. He said that grew in the swamp and then by the looks of it, this is a swamp. I'm no swampologist, but looks like we're going to see settled walking around here. Now, I wish I could actually find a way through here. Hell yeah. I don't remember how much grass I was meant to get for that guy, but I'm not leaving without like a whole heap. Okay, that's a witch's house if I ever saw one. Like, come on. Nothing good is going to come from her. Ah, a bridge. Alright, cool. What up, bitch? I mean, witch. The witch had asked us to collect a cauldron for her and a silver star pumpkin. In exchange, she would sell me potions and recipes. I then spent the rest of day 50 walking home. Alright, now to spend 27 hours walking home. Is this the way I came, or is this a different way? No, this is definitely different. Off a f Nope. Not gonna say it. Not gonna swear. I've sworn too many times. That only took like a really, 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 really long time. I woke up on day 51, ready to take on the day. Back your stuff, kids. We're going fishing. We did not go fishing. Instead, I decided to meet up with the merchant and finally cure him of his hiccups. This unlocked tier 2 of his shop and now I could purchase grape seeds. It was just my luck that the merchant's next quest was for me to go and talk to the witch. I stopped off at home to clear out the rest of the basement and also find the keeper's diary, which I have to give to the astrologer in two days. And I need to find that diary as well. I meant to give it to the astrologer, but I do not know where I've left it. Not in there. Not in there. Not there. Shit, what have I done with it? Okay, we're not going to panic. We're going to have one more really good look. Oh, I don't see a book down here. I took a break from frantically searching on day 53 so that I could progress the merchant's quest with the witch. However, the whole time I was panicked that I had somehow despawned the diary and ruined the playthrough. You know, I was really hoping that I'd open this and the diary would just be sitting there. God, I hate traversing this swamp. I hate it so much. Never, ever doing that again. There we go. After traveling for the entire day to talk to the witch, she wouldn't help me until I found her cauldron. On the bright side, I finally found time to fish. I don't know if it's doing anything. Oh wait, I don't even have any bait. I probably need bait, don't I? I headed home empty-handed and then had a genius idea. Today's plan is we're going to go to the astrologer and pretend that we have the book and try turn in the quest. The game might just accept it. That was a stupid plan. With nothing to do until the next day, I decided to give the dungeon another go. But maybe, maybe it comes back if I lose it. Yes! Yes! Oh, yes! I have never been so happy. Holy shit. Thank fuck. Oh my god. Oh my god. Alright. Next moon day, we can go and see the astrologer again. When I was rage googling about the diary, I also... I also worked out that you can get the bloody nails from um, Iron Maidens. You know, like those big spiky coffin things. So we are on the lookout for them. I should have been doing this earlier. You get so many resources from this place. I headed upstairs and cleansed myself of my sins. 
Get the fuck out of my church. After that, I pillaged a corpse for its skull and blood before going to sleep. On day 56, I decided to research a whole heap of random stuff for the science points before preparing for another delve into the dungeon. I crafted up some green jelly by combining honey and slime and then went down to dungeon level 2. The jelly proved to be great at restoring my stamina and allowed me to progress through level 2 with ease. I resupplied again and headed into level 3, where I encountered my first new enemy. You all know what I'm here for, just give it to me. This might present an issue. Oh, get chopped. Get chopped up. These big buggers dropped various powders, which at the time I could only assume was for potion making. Unfortunately, the enemies on level 3 were far too strong for me in my current form, so I decided to invest in the armor technology. Maybe it's worth bringing armor next time. I've been able to unlock the armor skill for a long time. Maybe now the situation calls for some armor. I'm going to go get the iron from our iron mine, bring it back and turn it into armor. I need, to, I need a porter, that's for sure, because I can't just carry this back on my own. That's ridiculous. It's heavy. Next corpse I get, I'm going to try to turn it into like a traveling zombie and carry my iron back for me. Yep, I've decided. That's what we're doing. While my iron smelted, I searched my many poorly sorted chests for the materials necessary to revive the dead. This is how I play like Minecraft as well. It just all goes in one chest and then I just suffer for the rest of the game. Okay, no, I, I do need to fix this. This is just atrocious. And so, day 58 was spent unfucking the mess that I had created. I was reasonably happy by the state of things by day 59, and I had my sights set on a new goal, Stonecutter Mark II. This upgrade would allow me to create polished stone so that I could start building higher quality church upgrades. To do this, I just walked around and dug stuff up for most of the day. In the early evening, the donkey had arrived. Oh my god, it's time. It's finally time. Awesome, I've been waiting for this. Oh, I'm so excited. My second zombie. So I think I might have this guy as like a transport zombie. Because I'm sick of walking all the way up there. There's like nothing good up there and it just takes 10 years to get there every single time. I took Steve straight up to the zombie biting area. But before I could set him up, I realized what day it was. Oh, it's finally astrology day. Oh no. <laughs> what have I done with the book? What is wrong with me? All right, bear with me. I have to very quickly find the book. I think I put it in here. Yep. All right, cool. I crafted everything I needed before running to go see the astrologer. The astrologer tells me that I can open a portal to get home by using a spirit laser on the witch hill. The components, however, are apparently located in the next town over, which I don't have access to. I stopped at the witch hill first, but I was turned away by the inquisitor's henchman. I then stopped at home to deal with the body in the morgue taking out all of his organs to study later. I disposed of the body and then got a good night's rest. I rushed to church on day 61 as I was keen to finish the service and set up my zombie porter. What they really need in this game, what they really need is like a bicycle or like one of those old timey bicycles. What are they called? The, um, you know, with the one big wheel, a penny farthing. Yes. Penny farthing. Are there mods for this game? If there's mods, I'm, I'm requesting a penny farthing mod. And then a 200 days video, I'm just going to be cruising around on my penny farthing. On my, it's such a hard word to say, on my penny farthing the whole time. <laughs> oh my god, that's so cool. Look at him go. <laughs> I'm just going to follow him. I want to see it. Oh, he's so cute. Look at him go. He's actually faster than I thought he was going to be. I thought it was going to be like walking dead zombie. With my second employee now transporting a constant stream of goodies to my house, I had the time to study more items and purchase a few more techs. The first order of business was to finally construct the Stonecutter 2. Polishing paste. What is polishing paste? Oh my god, here he is. Ah, oh, that's so good. I decided to spend the morning of day 62 making my graveyard beautiful. The majority of the day was then taken up mining stone by hand to decorate my graveyard. In the evening, I set up a new farming plot. Then I repaired my tools before turning in for the night. On day 63, I tried to sell my unwanted seeds to the farmer, and then I unlocked the last tier of the pub keeper's shop. Oh, sick. I can buy wine off him tomorrow. That was the last, the last little bit I needed. Okay, that's a good thing. Because I can give the wine to the skull dude, and then there was something else I was meant to do with wine that I don't remember. I then continued to collect stone well into the night, 
I kept going on day 64, collecting an absolute shitload of stone. Alright, works perfectly. So now... Bring it down. I thought I was onto something for a second there. Apparently not. Only taking a break to fulfill my oath as a graveyard keeper. Alright, what are we working with here? We need to start taking their skin for armor. I need four skins. You know, I kind of like this whole cremation thing, because it just, like, covers up the, um, horrible crimes that you do to those poor corpses. So, yeah, I took your heart, your skull, and your intestines for evil purposes, but, like, now I'll just set you on fire and no one will even know. I purchased the tech for advanced conical flasks on day 65 and then began to craft them. While I waited for them to smelt, I continued to improve the graveyard. On day 66, I went on an emergency trip to purchase ink from the astrologer. Oh, that's expensive. Whatever. Kind of neat. We need it. Because I still can't make them. I don't know how to get feathers. Quickly stop and see this guy. Hopefully he sells wine for a reasonable price. Ah, oh, shit. I need two wine. I'm not going to be able to afford it. Please be cheap. Please be cheap. Fuck off. That is take That price is taking the piss. That is just unreasonable. With the ink that I had purchased, I was now able to create the cookbook that the donkey requested all of those days ago. I woke up to a message from a communist party of donkeys on day 68, which asked me to send them faith and writings in exchange for cash, which seemed like a sweet deal. After searching for my prayer orb thing for most of the day, I prayed for the church to give me enough faith to create another zombie. Oh, that's four. Three more. Come on, one, two, get the hell out of my church. I wrote, but forgot to send the communist propaganda and then put some iron onto smelt before bed. On day 69, I forged complex parts out of the iron that I had smelted the day prior and collected my carrots. After that, I took a shortcut to the town and finally got Jerry his wine. I should have known, however, that he wouldn't be happy and he sent me on another fetch quest. Are you serious? Man wants Cognac. Fuck you, Jerry. I headed east of town and began digging up random treasures from these unsuspecting piles. After many failed attempts, I had found an archaeological machine. Jerry explained that it was from the previous keeper and that it could be useful. Before we could check it out, however, we were stopped by this nerd, who demanded that we stop and then was very mean to me. I headed back home to Jerry, who suggested that we buy the land above the machine and build our own pub. Given the fact that I had three silver to my name, I knew this dream was a long way away. So, I went to bed. The next morning, I finally had all of the materials to construct my alchemy table. I probably shouldn't have put it vertically, I probably should have put it sideways. My next goal was to construct the alchemy rack, so that I could store all of my potions and powders that I had been collecting. As I was too broke to buy any beams, I decided to do some more dungeoneering to progress with Snake. This time, the enemies were considerably harder. Alright, I gotta leave. Have literally like one health left. But, that's a lot of good stuff. I don't entirely know what it does, but I'm sure it does something cool. And we got the nails, which was the main thing we were here for. Unfortunately, I was just short on nails. Didn't I get eight? Ah, <sighs> fuck. Okay, you know what? I'm confident enough to go back and fight this guy again. Oh, he doesn't, he doesn't respawn. I'm just gonna lure him. Come on. Right, let's fight. <laughs> Take that, you dog. No! Oh, I had him. That's upsetting. That it's very upsetting. I decided that now was the time to upgrade. I spent night 71 crafting an upgraded sword, and then I created a set of armor on day 72. I had a midday nap to restore my stamina, and then I headed straight back down into the dungeon. My upgraded armor and weapons made clearing the dungeon considerably easier. Can I get him stuck behind the wall? Haha! <laughs> oh, this is much more effective than the other sword. And after getting all the nails, all I had to do was wait for Snake. 
I spawn camp the farmer on the morning of day 73 in the hopes that selling my seeds to him would allow me to trade at a higher level so I could purchase grape seeds. So surely if I sell him like 90 carrots, I'll be able to get to the next level. You would think. If there's no grape seeds on level two, I'm going to crack it though. I'm going to be so upset. I went back home that night and sat in the dungeon waiting for Snake to arrive. However, it turns out that Snake only comes every night until you help him open the gate. From then on, he only comes on green day. Unfortunately for me, I was not aware of this at the time. So the next day, I went back to wait for him again. I don't understand. I swore he... I'm sure he said he comes every night. I don't know why it's different now. After being disappointed the second time, I led my church service. I'm praying for Snake to arrive. That's my prayer. And then visited the farmer to see if my hard work had paid off. Oh, nice. So he just like completely wasted my time. Uh, I mean, I can get the pumpkin for the witch. Maybe that the merchant that sells all the fancy things, maybe he's got one. Of course he's not there. When does he come? Oh, it's above their head. Okay. So Snake comes on Horn Day and the Merchant comes on Bigger Horn Day. Okay. Now I get it. It's only been like 70 days in this game and I'm now learning how to do it. Now that I had an understanding of basic game mechanics, I decided to visit Horodric to see about purchasing some land. Fuck off. He then suggested that I buy the land in the name of the poorest villager in town, which would give me a discount. After a very disappointing day, I headed home to check out what I thought was a brewery. It turns out this is a DLC area with a bunch of different mechanics that I'll have to save for the 200 days video. I left old mate to his own devices and then I set my sights on creating an oil press. It was relatively simple to build and I would need it to create polished stone. I also finally remembered to give the propaganda that I had created to the donkey who rewarded me with a fistful of jewellery that I could sell to the merchant. On night 75, I attempted to create my first piece of polished stone, only to find myself lacking a critical ingredient. I needed to collect fat from the corpses, which I would then squeeze out into oil. Alternatively, I could use a chisel. Not realising that I could make a chisel myself, I spent day 76 in search of a chisel. On my way, I sold the jewellery that had been given to me for a huge profit, and then I spent most of it on horseshoes for the donkey. Unsuccessful in my quest to find a chisel, I came back home to my first corpse in ages. I jumped on the opportunity to gain another employee, and I decided that I would take him to work on mining stone. Before setting out, I slept through to the early hours of day 77, so that I could give the required items to Snake before I forgot. Oh, I got the stamp. And a town pass. Oh, this is huge. Okay, this is exciting. Now that I had acquired a town pass, a town adventure became high on my to-do list. But before I could do that, I had some unfinished business to attend to. I gathered the required materials for the zombie quarry and then put Jim to work. Get to work. Oh, that's so good. It's just another thing I don't have to worry about anymore. Oh, that's slow. We might put another zombie there. After sleeping through the rest of night 77, I poached all of the good parts from this bloke before moving him into his new digs. I then ventured into town to show Horodric the authentication stamp that Snake had given me. This would allow me to sell him human flesh disguised as animal meat. I started collecting flesh for this purpose when I arrived home. I also made sure to take the skull and fat for future recipes. On day 78, I made a campfire. I began the day by breaking down and smelting the iron ore that Steve had been delivering for a while now. Once that was done, I buried another soul. Graveyard's starting to fill up nicely. This is my best one yet. On day 79, I prayed for my sins. Why are we all dressed like monks? Isn't this a Christian church? You know, because of the big cross. And then began the arduous task of tidying the church cellar. Once things were reasonably organized, I took some time to create polished stone using my patented recipe for human oil. I needed this to eventually construct an incense burner for the church, which would raise the quality enough for me to get a new and improved mega church. I continued smelting and smashing stones before eventually going to sleep. This continued into day 80, where I created an additional four pieces of polished stone. I then immediately got to work on constructing the incense burner, which I decided to put right next to my shrine. Ah, success. All right, we're finally done. I then shuffled some items between my chests while I waited for more iron to process. I built a scroll shelf on day 81, which finally gave all of my papers and notes a home. And then I tended to my farm in the afternoon. 
Once that was over, I built a heap of iron parts for no real reason before turning in for the night. Day 82 was shopping day. I stuffed my inventory full of goodies and then made my way into the village. We are off to go and sell a whole heap of the stuff that we've been collecting. And we also need to buy things. Yeah, on today's shopping list, we're going to need honey for food. We're going to need pen and ink, but I don't think we can get that. And wooden beams, at least four of them, and probably some seeds on the way home. Now, whether or not I can actually remember to get all these things is another story. Along the way, I found this depressing gravesite. Was that always there? I wonder what happened. I feel like I should be a good Samaritan and come and fix the grave. My first stop was the honey shop so that I could make more jelly. I bought a heap of honey and then 10 bees so that I could eventually farm my own honey. I then purchased wooden beams off of the lumberjack which would be used to build my alchemy rack. My third stop was the smith where I sold a whole heap of crap that was just taking up space. Last stop, the farm. Oh, perfect timing, there's a body on the way. I reckon if I'm quick, I can beat him. Here, I stocked up on carrot seeds before racing the corpse cut home. I left the body out in the elements and then finally constructed the alchemy rack. We have an alchemy rack, but don't get me wrong. I don't, I don't, I don't love the placement of this. I don't think you can move things anyway without like destroy, without destroying them. So I don't want to, I don't want to mess with it. I also decided to begin work on getting the bee farm up and running. After being rudely interrupted, I had to go and purchase ink from the astrologer on day 84, where I managed to blow through most of my remaining money. The rest of the day was spent making paper and notes in the basement so that I could use them to research later. Before church on day 85, I spoke to the bishop about getting a bigger church, but I had forgotten one thing. Instead of catching them myself, I decided to rush to the fishermen and just buy them. I held up my end of the bargain, but the bishop required one more thing from me. Oh, fuck you. Seriously? I then decided that this was going to be the best reason for me to finally take my town permit and explore the new area. Excuse me, sir. I will be going to the town. Here is my permit. Thank you. Goodbye. Oh, fuck! What was that about? Yeah, I agree, Jerry. What the heck? Jerry tells me that I'll have to talk to Snake, who can find me a way into town. In the meantime, I decided to keep myself occupied by building the apiary. Unfortunately, I only had enough bees to create one for the time being. My bee-related shenanigans had sadly come to a standstill, so I decided to use up the rest of day 86 experimenting with the alchemy table. Let's do I feel like it's going to be health powder and blood. In fact, I'm willing to bet. Okay, no, that's zombie juice. Let's try health powder and water. Goo of chaos. I'm guessing that means I fuck something up. Let's do... Let's try life powder and blood. I fucked that one up too. I was attempting to create my own health potions, but after several failed attempts, a new employee had arrived. I took Gavin up to the spooky tree and built him a prison. I mean, workstation, for him to occupy. After that, I made my way to the traveling merchant, where I spent most of my money on more grape seeds. Why can't I grow grapes there? Okay, well, how do I make grapes then? Eventually, I found the old vineyard and planted my first crop of grapes. I had one objective on day 89, and that was to build a shortcut to my grape farm. I took care of grave-related business in the morning. It's just down to like the... It's just down to the laziness factor. You know, I don't want to have to dig him a hole and everything. I just want to take his parts and go. And then constructed the shortcut by the afternoon. On day 90, I was headed into town, and by coincidence, I bumped into the Inquisitor. I still had not figured out a way to get around his guards at Witch Hill, and so I reluctantly joined the dark side and chose to be his friend. My first mission was to collect firewood and then hype up the next witch burning ceremony by making flies. With that in mind, I continued to purchase bees before realizing that I was poor. To cheer myself up, I spent the rest of the day dungeoneering. I emerged on the afternoon of day 91 with a task in mind. I crafted flies through the night and then chopped wood in the morning before buying the pumpkin from the farmer. I conducted my sermon and then took the pumpkin to the witch's house. Ah, uh, that's right. Okay, where do we get a cauldron? 
I need to be a gold star pumpkin to enchant. How the... How do I get a gold star pumpkin? Okay, whatever. We can give her the cauldron and the health potion, probably. Okay, so for the health potion, I guess I can just hit the barrels in the dungeon and just hope for one. Because I don't know the recipe. I don't even know if I can make a health potion in the tier 1 alchemy bench. Actually, does she... Can I trade with her? Maybe she has, like, health potions. Or at least maybe a recipe. She, in fact, did not trade with me. Not to be deterred, I checked on my grapes before cooking up some more jelly. The next day, I took my wares into town in an attempt to make a quick buck. And then I cooked up my master plan. Okay, 30 silver is pretty obtainable. That's not too bad. We can do that. So I think maybe if we get the winery up and running and then we really like focus on burials and cremations, we should be there in no time. We'll see how much the grapes sell for by themselves. It's probably not much. It's probably more worth turning them into wine. So we should get the barrels made as well, actually. I think if we get the barrels, the bee farm, and the wine, so we should be able to crank this out. I employed my second zombie porter and then went downstairs to visit Snake, who could help me into town if I could find him a Necronomicon. I then went dungeon crawling once more to find a health potion for the witch. Once I had emerged, there was another body for me to deal with. My graveyard was starting to look full, so I opted to restock the crematorium and set the body on fire. Speaking of setting people on fire, it was witch burning time. For assisting the Inquisitor, he granted me access to his vineyard workbench, which would allow me to expand my grape farming operation in future. The rest of the day was spent preparing the new vineyard, and then I worked into the night building wine barrels. The next morning, I took a trip to town to see the beekeeper, so that I could expand my honey operation. I collected all the honey I had been farming to sell later, and then headed down to give my sermon. Not before taking all of the good parts out of this corpse though. I prayed for forgiveness and then collected the ashes of my victims, which I then prepared at my kitchen table. I then purchased the circular saw technology and spent the majority of the day putting it together. The benefit I gained from the circular saw is that I no longer need to purchase beams from Tress, which are capped at four per day. I woke up on day 99 and set off for a trip into the village. I sold a few beams and some less than adequate human meat before spending all of my money on grape seeds. I planted the seeds on my way back home and then decided to check on my employees. I added a third beehive on my return journey and then went to bed for the last time. I woke up on day 100 cheery and full of aspiration. So today is my last day already. Time does fly when you're having fun. All right, so for my last day, I want to, hopefully my grapes are ready. I'd love to get some wine going and I'm also going to sell all the honey I have because I want to see how profitable the honey business is going to be. I have a feeling it's going to be decently profitable. I stopped to pick my grapes and then was off to the village for the last time. I can't sell honey. I better be able to sell it to someone. How much money I've wasted on the bees. I did, however, give some honey to Dig, who in return gave me a cake recipe. The day wasn't lost and I decided to end the episode with a good deed. So I gathered my repair kit and fixed this poor man's grave. There you go, buddy. At least you've got a gravestone now. Well, it looks like that's it. I am thoroughly enjoying this though, and I will definitely be coming back to play more.